Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is for of beauty and if I've remembered to do it in editing, you should be watching me in black and white. If you're not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. As you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. This is a continuation of my one row in a palette series using Juvia's Tribe palette. And the lovely person I'm collabing with today is my Titania Queen of the Fairies, aka Laura from Gold Star Work. So, if you want to find out exactly which row I have chosen, how well or otherwise this palette performs, and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor unless we're already there, then my friends, you have the best seat in the house. As I have said for some time and oft here echoed elsewhere, but I have a sleepy sloth straw to accompany me. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, you will have seen from the yeah, new top. Kind of... I picked it up because I thought it would be a little bit different, just this bit of a white stripe rather than my usual navy or black tops that I wear that are just plain. But as usual, it keeps sliding off to one side. Oh, I just give him these tops I really do. Right, you will have seen from the intro that this is a continuation of my One Row in a Palette series. The palette in question today is Tribe by Juvia's. The person I'm collabing with is Laura. And when I say row, I don't just mean a horizontal row. I mean the vertical columns or the diagonal. Basically any straight line in the palette. So, I'm going to go for this vertical row of greens down this side here. Uh, spring green, deep green. And a dark green shimmer. So, this is still a teaching channel by virtue of which I zoom very close into my eyes so you can see what's going on. Um, I, do, I do all of the blending in real time, I don't cut anything out or speed anything up. Uh, which does mean that my films take a little bit longer than most but it also means that beginners and people with chronic pain like myself can hopefully keep up with me if you're more experienced and just want to see how I'm applying the colours and how the palette performs there is a speed widget up here somewhere feel free to use it now um, as well as being a teaching channel I discovered during one of my many painsomnia moments where I research different makeup techniques and things to make sure that I'm giving you the best advice possible. Um, I discovered that I thought I'd had hooded lips because I was getting the same symptoms that people with hooded lips were getting. Turns out I've got deep set eyes. And once I've discovered that, I realise that a lot of people on here that say they have hooded lids actually have deep set eyes. So, I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment where I talk you through how to work out whether you have deep set or hooded lids and explain the workarounds for both eye shapes so that you get the best result possible. Oh, do you ever have one of those days when there's nothing different in your mouth, you've not got any ulcers or anything and you haven't chipped a tooth, but all of a sudden the teeth in your head start irritating your tongue for no reason? Yeah, I'm having one of those days. 
So if I sound a little bit weird today, that's why. Right, as I said, I zoom in very tight to my eyes. So even if you're watching me on a phone screen, you'll be able to see what's going on. So don't jump and scream when this clip is very all up in your junk, basically. No, not any junk. That's here's the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues.
Hey my lovelies, I'm back. Right, okay. Um, I'm actually trying out something new today. I, I've got this JCAT Eye Insurance Anti-Fatigue Cooling Under Eye Balm with Cucumber and Aloe Extract. No idea if it's doing anything good, but it definitely feels nice under my eyes. So, um, just thought I'd let you know that that's on there in case you're wondering why my under eyes are super shiny today. Um, I've got a couple of new Voldemorphy brushes that I'm going to be using today. The M139 and the M506 just to try them out, see what they're like, see if they're worth recommending. So, I was watching a film that Laura did uh, and she was using the Tribe and she was saying how much she loved the palette and she doesn't use it anywhere near enough and I thought, no, do you know what, I haven't used mine for quite a while either. So I messaged her saying, how do you fancy joining my One Row in a Palette series? I've got a lot of series on my channel, haven't I? <laughs> um, and she, she was like, uh, yes please, that would be lovely, thank you very much. So, that is what we are doing today. As I said, I'm going to do the far right hand column or row, which is Tootsie, uh, Kuba and San. So, I'm going to start off going into Tootsie, which is the bright green. And I'm going to do the Viennese Waltz of Blending. Hold the brush right at the very end so you put as little pressure on your lids as possible. By Viennese Waltz we do natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle in the middle, and then reverse turns back out again. The reason we do that is because I'm 46, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds and the skin on my eyelids moves but I know 20 year olds that have always been slim that have looser eyelids it can just be a genetic issue and by doing circular movements like this we're very very gently moving the skin on our eyelid around to make sure that we get it if we were just doing the windscreen wiper like this your skin can fold over on itself. See, like that. And you can get a white stripe. Which is a dead giveaway that your eyelids are looser and can make you look older and less put together. So, I am just giving this a good old a blend out. I do occasionally chuck a bit of a windscreen wiper in as well. Mm, okay. I do sometimes struggle here and here because I get very dry patches, like almost like an eczema. And it can cling to the um, powder or the eyeshadow that I'm putting on. And it seems to be doing that today, which is rather annoying. This brush is super soft though, I will admit, because where I've got fibro, um, I have what's called a lodnia, which is where the slightest touch on my skin is painful. Um, this for example, if you could imagine you've got a sunburn, really really bad sunburn or gravel rash um, even with this super soft brush this feels like I'm dragging a cheese grater across my skin which is why I used to try and if I was having a, a reasonable pain day I used to try and get you know one or two films done where I'd do a look take it off give it 
half hour and then put the second look on. But unfortunately, um, my love new has got so painful now that I just I can't do that. It just it hurts too much, which ends up making my eyes stream even more and then ruins any look that I have done. Which is highly frustrating. But as you can see this has blended really nicely. Looks a little bit patchy that side. I might actually try a different brush. I'm going to grab my Royal Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brush. Just in case it's the Morphe brush that's giving me the issue. Let's try a brush that I know how it performs. No, it would seem it's my eyelids today that are playing up. Okay. That's annoying because normally this palette does not do this. However, if you get this issue, like I'm having now, blend all the edges out till it's as smooth as you want. Pop some more pigment on your brush and then just tap to build the colour up rather than blending. And then you can still get the colour on the lid but you lose that patchiness. Right, Laura. Regular viewers to my channel. Hopefully you know Laura by now because we have we, we've been doing a collab every month for the last nine months with Nona where we use the ColourPop nine pan monochromatic palettes. But she's also been in um, my pick series she's been in bigger collabs that I've done um, she's my I always say that she's got such a beautiful voice she's actually an artist um, which means she has absolutely fantastic understanding of color theory I've learned a lot from her including how to blend yellow and purple together without them going muddy and horrible um, and I was reading my old copy of Midsummer Night's Dream and I suddenly realised that when I was hearing Titania, Queen of the Fairies voice in my head it sounded like Laura so she is officially Titania, Queen of the Fairies for me right I'm going to go in with this smaller Voldemorphy 506 brush. I'm going to go into San, which is the deeper green matte. Yeah, so Laura lives in New Zealand. Complete other side of the world to me. Which can. It sometimes means that our conversations can go on two or three days just trying to sort things out because obviously. When I'm awake, she's asleep and vice versa. So you can see I'm just doing tiny little circles through what's my natural crease here. If you've had to move your crease, now's the time to follow wherever you've moved your line to. I'm just building that colour up. Yeah, so, um, you know, sometimes it takes us a few days to work out what we're going to do. But with these one row in a palette, I always give the person collabing with me first choice. And actually I was quite expecting her to choose the row that I've chosen, but she didn't. But so you're going to have to watch her film to find out exactly which row she has chosen. I'm just going to pop some of this darker shadow on the outer edge of my mobile lid, like so. 
I do love this palette. I think this is my favourite of all the Juvia's palettes. Um, I've got quite a lot of the Juvia's palettes, which if you watch my um, my latest eyeshadow collection films, you'll be able to see how many I've got. Um, but this is by far the one that I reach for most. But if you want to see me start to include more of the older Juvia's palettes, if you've got them and are looking for some fresh ideas as, you know, maybe colour combinations you've not thought of or just need some fresh inspiration, let me know because I can always include them on my retro review series. <laughs> Honestly, I've got so many series with this channel, it's ridiculous. But I quite like that because I, I like being able to pop them into their own different playlists so that if you're specifically into just product reviews, you can just find product reviews. If you're just into older palettes, like a shop my stash sort of thing almost, then you can go into the retro review. If you're just into collabs, well I've got a whole folder of collabs. So I do like, um, I think I might have to get some more of these little brushes because that was really nice and easy to get into that corner there. This I like. This is the M506. Definitely like this one a lot. Not as soft as the one I was using to do this with, but, you know, soft enough. Right, I'm going to use, if I can get the damn spray to work, look at that. I'm going to use my Cucumber Revolution Fixing Spray to wet the pigment once I've applied it to my brush for the shimmer. Because, as we know, we never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Right, I'm going to use the Jeffrey Voldemorphy JS24, which is his lip brush. It is clean, it's just stained. Because I like the point you have at the end here, it's great for getting right down into that corner. So I'm going to go into Kuba, spelt with a K. going to pack the pigment onto both sides. Look, at, isn't that a stunning? It's like a beetle's wing. It's lovely. Um, I'm just going to wet the pigment. I wet all shimmers that I use because it just helps to prevent fallout and gives them as best a chance as possible of looking as good as possible. Right, dry your ferrule off when you've done that. Easiest way to do that is stick it in your knuckles and spin. If you don't get into the habit of doing that, you'll end up with moisture getting down here which will loosen the glue and then you won't have a brush, you'll have a stick. Right. I'm going to apply this to the two thirds of the lid. Or mobile lid anyway. But so far hasn't had any colour on it. You do get some fallout still with shimmers, that's only to be expected. But when you wet them you do get far less than you would do if you applied them dry. And then I'm going to use the tip of the bristles just to buff and blend where that shimmer meets the matte on the outside there. Lovely job, Tony Mama. Right, dry the brush off. Now with this eye, I do have to do things a little bit differently. Where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old, when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly, before I totally lost the sight in it when I was 13, I've got super deep creasing just here, as you can see. And if I don't stretch the lid out, what happens is that the pigment builds up loose in those creases. And then as it dries through the day, it falls into my eye and falls onto my face and it's very uncomfortable. So, the way to do this without causing any additional damage to your eye 
using your nail work out how wide the creasing is then allow the same width again and then put your finger on your lid and gently stretch the lid out just far enough to straighten out the crease so I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll I'm just pulling it out far enough to straighten that crease out once I've applied the pigment smoothly I'm gently letting go and then just doing the rest of the lid the same way as I did for the other eye this eye does have a lot more movement to it as you can see but that is because it was pulled around so much when I was younger and again use the tip of the bristles just to buff that together on the edge there I really like that so far this is looking lovely right my darlings I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation and bits and bobs on um, so I'm going to have to wait until I can talk to you again but for you sweetheart there is going to be absolutely no delay at all it will be instant okay so I'll see you right now hey hey my lovelies I am back uh, I did my usual with the brows for those who are not regular here um, I used the Revolution Soap Brow Kit because A, I like the convenience of it because obviously you can close the lid, keeps it clean uh, but also I like the little um, brush in it, it's, it's like, a, like a little mini toothbrush but a little bit firmer so it's great for really pulling those hairs up now I use the soap dry, I don't wet it, I don't wet the brush so it's a little bit sticky when you put it on which is awesome because then you use this end of your brow brush and dip it into whichever colour you want in this case I used San which is this green that I used here and just brush it through the brow which has a double combination because the brows are sticky the powder sticks to it clearly uh, but also the powder then sets the brow into shape so it helps to hold it all day if you haven't got the soap brow kit don't worry just use the other end use your spoolie on whichever your favourite bar of soap is ok going in with this one into sand again to line my lower lash line um, I have issues with watery eyes I always have had and um, Fibro makes that worse, hay fever makes that worse, so I actually can't put anything really in my waterline. So I prefer to smoke my lower lash line out. If you want to put something in your waterline, I would suggest with these colours, if you've got a green, put a green in. If not, um, a bright yellow would look good, or a black, or just a whatever nude suits your skin tone basically now I'm going to go in with this brush which is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette flat topped but chunky uh, but you can just use a smudger brush or a dense um, blender brush and I'm going to dip back into Tootsie which is the first green that we used and use that just to buff and soften that lower lash line a little bit. For my um, bronzer today and my blush, I actually used the Saharan Blush 2 from Juvia's and I used obviously the bronzy blush as my bronzer and then a mixture of the pink and the orange blushes for my blush R. And then I put a little bit of the pink over the top because I'm, I'm really into shimmery blushes at the moment. Um, and then I've got a Juvia's highlight, which I can also use in just a moment. I was super lucky, the, um, the blush palette and the Juvia's highlight were both gifts from my lovely friend Kay. So thank you, my darling. Just to show you, they do actually get used. 
This is the um, highlights you sent me, the Tribe, Volume 3, so matches the Tribe palette and is pal girl friendly and has a mirror which is awesome. So this brush that I'm using is just a cheap old lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago. But it's just a great shape, again flat topped for getting up under the tail of your brow. And then again I like to do my inner corner, run it under the tear duct and just blend it into the shades that I've done underneath my eye. You don't have to do that, you can just do the inner corner. But for my eye shape, I just think it helps to finish it off nicely. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you one last time. Yes, I just poked myself in my left eye. Being blind in that eye, that happens quite a bit. Because uh, obviously, no peripheral vision, I can't see how close I'm getting. And the viewfinder, when you haven't got your contact lenses or your glasses on, a little bit far away. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time, chuck some more of this highlight on, mascara, lipstick, and I'll be back with my finished look. Again, for you, instant. I am back. The lipstick is actually a Juvia's lipstick. It is a Moro Metallic. It's part of a two set that I bought. You've got the matte and the metallic, um, both the same purple, but... You know me and my purples, and I haven't rocked a purple lip for quite a while. But I thought, seeing as how I'm doing Juvia's pretty much everything, I could have used my Juvia's foundation, because I have got the foundation stick, but um, I'm trying out a new one on on me at least. This is the Koki HD Foundation Skin Perfect in shade 10C, if you're wondering. Um, the way I do my foundation reviews now has changed. I don't, the first time I use it, do the demo. I wear it three or four different times um, using different um, primers and setting powders and just work out which way gives it the best chance of lasting the longest and then I'll come on and show you. So it's been a while since I've done a foundation review because I'm, I'm trying quite a few new ones at the moment. Uh, as I said this is my final look for the one row in the palette for the Tribe palette. Uh, I'll just show you, front cover has faded, it was originally a pinky red, uh, more the same, more the colour of the inside. Uh, I use this as my bronzer and a combination of these two as my blush, topped with that to give the blush a little bit of shine. Uh, this is the volume 2, if I'm light handed with it, as you can tell, I can wear it. Um, but I'm, I don't mind having a more pronounced blush anyway. I'm a girl from the 80s, I mean, come on. You're lucky I haven't got it right up here somewhere still. Um, and obviously the Tribe Volume 3 highlighter, which I showed you earlier. Uh, mascara today is the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. Love that, but it has got a huge brush. If you've got tiny eyes, be careful. But this is my finished look for my one row in a palette using just the greens. So what do you think? Do you like? If you were collabing with me, which row would you choose? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So which of those would you have chosen if you were collabing with me? Would you have chosen the same row as me? Would you have chosen row six? Hmm? Right, my lovelies. If you are one of my 4F beauties, please double check, you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you, but rather cheekily, they are leaving my films in your news feed, so it's not obvious you have been unsubscribed. 
when you're checking your subscription status please check your notification bell it still says all notifications once you've done that maybe give me a cheeky like a bit of a comment possibly even a share to help with the algorithm I'm going to need you to go over to the beautiful Laura, aka Titania, Queen of the Fairies. Um, and I'm going to need you to check out her film and see which row she's chosen and how she has done her look. If you are here from Laura's channel or you stumbled over me in some other way, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you made it this far through the film, I'm guessing there's something about this mad blethery bird that you quite enjoyed watching. That being the case, we would be delighted if you wanted to join the 4F family. Super easy to do, there's a big red subscribe button down there somewhere. Hit the button, turn it grey. Ring my bell, ring my bell. And choose all notifications and then keep saying yes and all and yes and all until YouTube stop putting up floating windows and asking you and then hopefully they'll tell you I don't know one in four of my films that go up speaking of my films that go up there are an awful lot that you can peruse through um, you can either start at the current film and work backwards or you can pick a playlist there are lots to choose from there's product reviews there's photo inspiration collabs, there's challenges, there's tags. I even read you my favourite poem. So, basically, as I've said for some time now, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge, and just enjoy some me time, chilling out, watching me blether on and apply colourful pigments are to my face. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.